If you want to build a real-time chat app using Ruby, the Volt framework makes a great choice because all of the updates happen in real time like you see here, and you can write your front-end and back-end code in Ruby. How would you handle persistence and ownership for all that data, though? Let's take a closer look by building this application. So, like always, whenever we start a project, we're going to create the app using the Volt new command, and we're going to name this app Chat. Once Bundler finishes running, we can CD in and get to work. First, I'm going to define a MongoDB persistent data model called Message. Message is going to represent a single message in our chat log, and it's going to be persistent across page refreshes. The way you generate a model is by typing volt g for generate model, and then we're going to pass in the name of our model message. That went ahead and created a scaffold for us. MongoDB is a schema list database, so we don't have to define our fields ahead of time. In today's example, we will, though. And this gives us the ability to add type validations and some other nice features that I'm going to cover later. You can declare a field's name and type via the field method. And this makes life easier by keeping our data relatively consistent. So let's go ahead and do that. First you declare the name of the field. Then you declare the type, which is a string in our case. Since this is a chat app, we're going to need a way of handling ownership by users. Luckily though, Volt comes with user management by default. We're going to do this using a method called ownByUser. ownByUser adds a user field to the model and assigns the current user of that model when it's created in the browser. So if you're logged in and you create a message object, it's going to automatically assign you as the owner of that model. It also adds some nice authorization tools to handle permissions, but I'm not going to cover that today. For more information, see the Volt API docs. Let's move into our controller now. This is the main controller that is generated by Volt by default. The index action is executed in the browser whenever the user visits the root path of the site. This is a chat app, so we're going to need users to sign in before letting them use the chat features. If you've worked with Rails or Devise, this syntax is going to look pretty familiar to you. It prevents users from accessing the index action without logging in first. This is going to be necessary so that we can assign the user to the message object that they create. So we're going to need a menu for users to chat with. I've already built one, so I'm going to paste it in right now. Let's talk about what's going on here. You might have noticed some unfamiliar attributes on our HTML tags, like this eSubmit attribute that's inside of our form tag. And you might have also noticed that we have some double mustache templates that contain Ruby code. In Volt, these are features known as bindings. As the name suggests, bindings are a way of binding data to your views. And this all happens with Ruby, even on the front end. Inside the form tag, we were using an eSubmit binding. And that binding allows us to call a controller method whenever a form gets submitted. We haven't written the controller method yet, but when we do, it's going to handle saving a message to the database. We won't need to worry about publishing the changes to other users because Volt is going to handle that for us automatically. I'd like to point something out on our input tag. The binding right here is a two-way data binding and it's binding to a yet-to-be-defined model. When we change the input's value, it's going to change our model and vice versa. You'll notice that I'm using a variable called page. So what is this page variable doing exactly, and where did it come from? Volt comes with several predefined collections. A collection is a group of models with varying levels of persistence, depending on the use case, and in our case, we're using the page collection, which is just a temporary holding area for models. 
Later on, we'll talk about the store collection, which uses MongoDB persistence. As you can see from the documentation, there's also some other ones such as Flash or Cookie Storage or also HTML5 Local Storage. You might have noticed that I prefixed my model attributes with an underscore, as seen here in the documentation. In Volt, you can think of models as objects similar to hashes. They're usually schemaless, so you don't necessarily need to define the attributes ahead of time, sort of how like a hash works in Ruby. But unlike hashes, you access data using underscore attributes instead of square brackets. To illustrate the use of underscore attributes, let's make some models using the Volt console. In these examples, I'll work with the message model that we've defined earlier in the video. Since our message model is stored in a schemaless MongoDB collection, that means we can add any attributes we need at runtime by using underscore attributes. Let's try that. Since we declared an attribute called body on the class definition at the beginning of this video, we don't need to use underscore attributes to access that one. So let's do this. Let's call message.body, and you'll notice that I didn't use an underscore in front of body, and it didn't raise an exception. Our form fields are bound to the model page dot underscore form, so we're going to need to write a model in the controller that populates that variable with an empty model. Let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to call the method that populates that empty model reset message, and it's going to set page dot underscore form to an empty message model. Then I'm going to add that to our index action, which gets called every time the page loads. Now, to handle form submissions, we need to save the message object to the database and then clear out the form afterwards. As you can see by this eSubmit binding, this behavior will be defined in a controller method named sendMessage. We haven't defined that method yet, so let's do that now. So we're going to define this send message method on our controller. And we're going to be saving the message into the store, which is uh, where all of our MongoDB collections live. And the name of the collection is messages. And it works similarly to the way an array works, because this is actually what Volt calls an array model. So we're just going to go ahead and insert the page dot underscore form variable. And when we're done doing that, we're going to call the reset message method again, so that the input text box in our HTML view is reset. So now we're done with the application. As you can see here, it's restricting access, and we have to log in. And that's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed watching. Feel free to leave comments if you have any questions.